and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee and I am your host for this program. For today's show, I am excited to welcome back my friend Ryan K. Hugh of Hugh and Bordenave. I'm saying that correctly, I hope. Ryan, welcome to the program. Welcome back to the program. You said it beautifully, uh, Kathleen. Um, I'm the one who usually says my, my own business partner's name wrong. <laughs> So perfect. It's perfect. Um, and you're fine. I'm doing okay. It's, it's crazy time. It's crunch time. Um, and you know, we're here to talk about a new law to get ready for in the new year. And I appreciate you reaching out as well, especially since uh, a lot of people who come on the show are small business owners. So, uh, to give everyone a bit of a background, Ryan was on the show maybe a year or two. It's been a while. Pandemic years have kind of molded together. So I don't know how long I've been. Uh, let's not use numbers. Let's not use numbers <laughs> anymore. I, I would like to say those three years don't really count. It, it's kind of weird to think I was actually sitting thinking about it in, in, you know, 2022. Technically we still had lockdown measures and kind of requirements. They had been far loosened, but yeah, it, it's all, it's only been a year, but it feels like it's been decades since I, I've seen people, but uh, for me, we kind of chug in along, we moved offices, so that's nice. Um, and kind of expanding practice areas and kind of dealing with, uh, a lot of business owners, actually, funny enough, um, we're talking about succession planning or getting out, getting out of business is give it over to the kids, or I'm going to sell it to my employees because for whatever reason, maybe it was the pandemic or whatnot, they wanted to get out of business. So been doing a lot of those kind of discussions as well but yeah it's been been fun interesting kind of times i think that's great just to give folks a bit of a quick overview what does your firm do who do you folks service before we get into the corporate transparency act we do everything <laughs> um i i always like to say we're problem solvers or if you have a problem we'll we'll, we'll fix it or attempt to we'll try and not make it worse um Joking aside, uh, my practice area tends to be what I call transactional compliance. But what that really boils down to is I tend to work very closely with small business owners, medium-sized business owners, or their kind of point or key person manager. And it is it is kind of troubleshooting a lot, a lot of business law and compliance matters. So I have a lot of uh, licensor, uh, license uh, professions, so contractors, physicians, even nurse practitioners or cosmologists or and or realtors. So there's that aspect. And then retail and kind of restaurant. I'm in the same building um, as the liquor commission. So liquor license kind of stuff. Uh, so you can see how, especially here in Hawaii, we're, we're comprised of so many small business owners and mom and pop. Um, that's kind of where I function. When I, while I said, you know, we kind of do everything. Uh, what it is, is, is my business partner, whose name you said absolutely correctly, or the name, um, he does litigation and he does personal injury. So I like to say that I do all the building of businesses and he does all the tearing apart and the fighting. So he works on our cease and desist and telling people stop using my name or, you know, you need to cut that out. And then also, uh, he does do personal injury claims. I, I like to tell the joke that because always people ask, how is a business attorney partners with a personal injury attorney? I was like, well, we fell into it by accident. <laughs> uh, actually, so it actually works out because a lot of times people forget that business owners are people, which is why we're, we're doing what we're doing today. And they actually can be hit by a car or accident and it really severely impacts and hurts the business when the the main owner operator cannot function in their business space. So there is synergy there. Thank you for explaining all that, Ryan. And I want to let everyone know that Ryan was very proactive in letting me know about this new act that will be taking into effect coming into the new year. So let's pull up the first slide. And I also appreciate how uh, Ryan, you like I mentioned earlier before the show, you have a way of explaining <laughs> some intricate concepts like this 
in layman terms. So let's go into it. Corporate Transparency Act taking into effect January 1st, 2024. What is that about? So back in 2021, uh, Congress and, and then President Trump signed into law that Congress passed this is the Corporate Transparency Act. It's taken the organization, the agency that we'll get into a little later, three years to develop the rulemaking for this to go into effect. But the basic gist of the Corporate Transparency Act and why we're talking today, because Kathleen, I believe you have an LLC, so small business owner, is this is adding an extra additional reporting requirement that many, many, many business owners, including their advisors. So I've talked to financial advisors and accountants who have their own LLCs or corporations. And they're like, wait, do I also have to report? I was like, yeah, probably. Um, and they're like, I've never heard of the financial crimes enforcement network. And I was like, yeah, most, most business owners don't. So we'll get into that. But Again, that's the gist of it. You will have to file a report if you basically have a corporation, LLC, or some type of business entity that you've registered here in Hawaii with the Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs Business Registration Division. Other states use a Secretary of State or some other type of uh, registration function. And so that kind of applies there. But here, it's if you've registered your business entity with uh, BREG, BREG, uh, then you're going to have to consider that you may have to file a report. There are exemptions. Okay, let's do slides two and three. You already touched upon um, why should business small business owners care, and um, is it a crime if you don't file? <laughs> it might be. Uh, so the thing is, is with this new report, um, it's going to be filed with the financial. Crimes Enforcement Network, short uh, abbreviation, FinCEN. Uh, the thing is, is, is that, like I said, for a lot of people who form LLCs or corporations and, you know, they don't go beyond the state, maybe they have a convenience store or maybe they're just a general contractor or maybe they're just selling, selling stuff on the internet from their home, right? Uh, they're not aware of this law when, and they're not aware of this federal agency. So... Part of the reason the Corporate Transparency Act came about was a lot of these LLCs and corporations that do exist across the country launder money. Um, this is primarily an anti-money laundering, uh, illicit activities um, type of law. It's used to combat, basically anybody can go into uh, BRAJ or corpor uh, Department of Corporations or Secretary of State of various states register an LLC and then just kind of hold themselves out. So again, this came about to combat money laundering, terrorism, and illicit activities. And why? how is it doing that? Well, it's forcing these business owners to disclose their ownership over these LLCs and corporations. So yeah, if you don't do it, it would be a violation. And if you, they discover that it was intentional or if you're reporting inaccurate information intentionally, yeah, it can actually lead to jail time. It's up to two years. Um, the daily penalty, I believe, for not filing the report, and if you have to, is $500 a day up to, I believe the limit is 10000 So yeah, every day you don't file this report. And if you're required to, you could be assessed penalties and fines. So it's... It's, it's actually something very ser serious. And despite the name and we lawyers and policymakers and legislators, uh, you know, when they're doing these things, they like to scare people with big fancy words, financial crimes enforcement that were um, corporate transparency act, beneficial owner, uh, ownership information report. Yeah, uh, it's relatively simple. It's just that I think like you, the reason why I did the outreach is a lot of people are just frankly unaware and it's coming in January 1, 2024. Okay, let's do... Long answer for those two slides. Yeah, yeah, let's do the four slides. Um, does everyone, if it, do all business owners have to file? And I love how you talk about the exemptions. So let's go into that, Ryan. No, no, there are 23 exemptions. 
But the thing is, is, is that a vast majority of those 23 exemptions are for already what we call reporting. I mean, uh, companies that kind of already routinely report to either the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, um, the S Securities Exchange Commission, and on a lot of other federal agents. That, that is, they're already regulated by disclosure requirements. And what are those types of businesses? Well, those are the companies on public stock exchange, uh, banking, uh, securities, investments. Um, a lot of these large financial regulated uh, industries that, again, they're already forced to disclose either ownership or make very clear about uh, their money or cash activities, they're generally going to be exempt. Um, moving down those 23 exemptions, going to the ones that people may consider that apply to them is, uh, first, uh, a lot of nonprofit. They're not really business owners, but they run a nonprofit, but they run it like a business. In general, tax exempt entities are going to be, so that's anything under the 501c uh, for the IRS. Uh, so biggest ones are 501c3s. They're going to also be exempt and it kind of makes sense. There's not supposed to be a beneficial owner over some type of charitable organization. The second one that people may consider um, as an exemption is inactivity. And there's very specific requirements. And basically, if you have a corporation or LLC that just exists on paper that you haven't done anything with and you can prove that it's been inactive, then you're also going to not, you're probably going to not need to report. But there's a little checklist that they've provided that if you can answer yes to all these questions, you're kind of exempt. And by they, I mean Austin said they have to check the box and kind of making a determination. For everybody else, though, unless you fall into those larger categories of operating companies that are already forced to make certain financial disclosures, again, like banks, uh, financial investment companies, uh, you're going to have to see if you can shoehorn yourself into one of those exemptions, which is probably unlikely. So somebody like yourself, Kathleen, if you run an LLC, make some money off of that LLC, you're probably going to have to disclose your ownership over your own LLC to fence and come the new year. And then Ryan, you mentioned inactivity as well. What Do you know the definition of that? Is there a certain time length of when and else? Yes. So the entity has to be in existence on or before January 1st, 2020. It has to not be engaged in active business. Um, it's not owned by a foreign person, whether directly or indirectly or wholly or partially. So there's something there to talk about, but they're not a part of these slides about foreign ownership of businesses because that also includes them. But I don't think that's where the second part of that's this for a part two show. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, continuing on the list of requirements of inactivity, um, has not experienced any change in ownership in the preceding 12 month period. So when you file, there hasn't been anything. And then the last kind of criteria are has not sent or received funds in the amount of greater than a thousand dollars. Basically haven't transacted business, right? And then the last one is does not otherwise hold any kind of type of assets in the United States or abroad. Um, any ownership interest in the, of other entities basically. So you, you can't say that, oh, this is a holding company that's inactive when it's, it, it, it has a child company or some type of interest and it's generating economic activity under there. But it truly is, is your company only exists on paper and you've done nothing with it, then, then you're going to be. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. Let's go into slides five and six, the, your checklist of what people may need to report. And again, thank you for making this convenient for people who may be watching the show. So let's go over slides five first. Okay. So really simply. Slide five is about the company, so about the LLC or corporation. And this is what we call a reporting company because why? It's, it's required to file the report because then you're going to list all the owners. But first part, reporting company is its full, its full legal name. So whatever you've registered, a lot of people like to use shorthands and um, drop off things. So it's going to be the full legal name. Attached to that is also the trade names. 
So you have to disclose all the trade names that you use associated that are, reg that are registered. Um, you're going to use a complete current U.S. address and then um, got to, so we're in Hawaii. So we're going to list out Hawaii is where you registered this LLC or corporation. Then you're going to put your federal employment identification number because it identifies it. Again, there are additional criteria if it's truly a foreign company that is, you know, it's, it's not registered or created in any of the 50 states. So again, if you want me back for that, we could talk about that, but I'm here primarily to help Hawaii small business owners um, with this. So the next slide this is a key critical component that I think a lot of small business owners are like, oh no, what do I have to share? What do I have to give? Um, so it uses the phrase beneficial owner, and we'll get into that in a minute, but beneficial owner information that is filed with the reporting company is the full legal name of the beneficial owner, um, their date of birth, their current residential address. So again, we're trying to combat money laundering, right? And that's the whole point of this new law. So they're trying to figure out who are you, you know, where do you live? And then also, are you a, a legitimate person, right? So the accompanying thing, and you may be used to this if you've already traveled abroad during COVID times, but a lot of governments required you, right? Oh, have you got your vaccine? Take a picture of your card, upload it. Very similar process. In this case, you have to have an identifying kind of document and uh, number information. So for a lot of people that will likely be their driver's license or a U.S. passport, you then need to put, take a picture, and this is the part where similar to the COVID vaccine cards is you're going to take a picture of that and upload it with all that other information, right? Again, if we're trying to combat uh, money laundering or uh, drug money or terrorism money, right? Now, now we can identify who the person is and that's all getting uploaded. So again, I recognize there are privacy concerns. A lot of LLC owners and corporation owners on the small business, they formed it for privacy. A little bit of that is going to go away by having this reporting requirement. Wow. Um, I think the last slide kind of goes over the beneficial owner or the next, not the last slide, the next slide. Yeah. Slide seven. So I, I keep going on about this beneficial owner and, and this doesn't actually mean if, for instance, Kathleen, if you have an LLC, you're a hundred percent owner of your LLC. You probably have a hundred percent, what we call membership interest or ownership interest in your LLC. And some LLCs use member units. The point being is it's very clear you own your LLC. But why do they keep putting beneficial in front of the word owner or ownership in this, in this law? It's because they realize that a lot of business partner relationships and a lot of LLCs in particular or registered type of partnerships, they have very un unique um, reward and benefit or financial interest relationships is, is that the owners, the partners, or the members of an LLC partnership may have structured ownership in a traditional sense, but the financial incentives, the authority and control is differentiated amongst the people who run and run and operate the business. So beneficial ownership information also includes uh, people who control. You can see this in a corporation. Maybe, maybe you're a secretary of your corporation or maybe you're a treasurer of your corporation but you have business partners, but as treasurer, you only have maybe 10% shares, which is under the 25% threshold. But as treasurer of the corporation, you can pledge securities, you can buy or mortgage the corporation. So therefore you would deem to have control and also be uh, construed as a beneficial owner. So for a lot of these complex business owner relationships, they're going to probably have to work with somebody like myself, and oh God, an attorney, right? Or with um, accountants or somebody, a professional advisor to identify who are the beneficial owners uh, of the entity. So again, we're talking about complex um, business partnership arrangements of figuring out who is exactly. Does that make sense? I know that's kind of a mouthful, but it's a very, it's a very kind of, um, 
complicated or abstract kind of concept for this this aspect of who is in control or who is a beneficial owner. Right. Um, since this is new, I mean, I know you said this, obviously this law is passed and that's why it's just coming into effect. Are small business owners, well, do you know if people are going to get alerted about this? Um, well, on the FinCEN page, they, they have an alert and a notice. In fact, uh, they just notified, uh, scam alert. So just exactly like how in the business registration, um, here, they always remind people don't give out your business injury because there's that flyer that goes out from a kind of a scam, a uh, fraudulent company for your annual report here. FinCEN did the same thing, but for me, in terms of just pragmatic logic, if you weren't required to report anything to this federal agency, why would you think to look there on that federal agency's website? So what I suspect is a lot of business owners are going to get informed about this through their trusted advisor. Either I, I would say business attorney, um, business accountant, or financial advisor who, as we're slowly as professionals getting advised and alerted to the new law and the requirements. And in fact, just last week, they have a new update. So for you serial entrepreneurs or people who own a large kind of holding company, but have a lot of uh, children company, again, complex relationships, everybody's been wondering, do I have to file over and over again for my parent company and all my other children company? Uh, they have alerted uh, a new kind of change that once you register one, and if you do request a, what they call a FinCEN identifier or FinCEN identifier number, you can then use that for all the filings of all the other reporting companies rather than re-uploading beneficial ownership information for each single company that you own or are deemed to control. I know that's fairly new, Ryan. Are, are you, or do you know what some of the penalties may be, especially since people are just learning about this Corporate Transparency Act. So again, the penalties will be uh, $500 a day that you, when you don't file, but guess what? They recognize that this is going to take people off guard and it's going to take some time and compliance takes a while, even if it's something simple. Um, and you have from January 1st, 2024 to December 31st, 2024, if, if your LLC or corporation exists as of right now, before the effective date of this new law, you have the whole year to get your reports in. I do think this is going to prompt some conversations for those business arrangements that are complex of, uh, do we have to adjust our operating agreement, our partnership agreement, or our bylaws to reflect because there's privacy issues or I think for others, uh, and, and because of the violations and, and finally the other violation that I'd mentioned earlier is, uh, uh, you could, you could jail them if you intentionally kind of deceive or not file, depending on how they make a determination. But going back to my other thread and thought, I think on the estate planning side for a lot of family businesses that are, you know, a series of corporations or LLCs. They're going to have to have a sit down with their business attorney and their uh, trust and estate uh, planning attorney. The reason is, is a lot of people are like, well, I hold, I'm okay. I hold my corporation in a type of trust. Again, using that control variable that I talked a lot about. Um, well, if you don't directly own it, but the trustee controls it, the LLC, the trustee would probably have to be, uh, declare, declare their Ben ownership on it. So I think again, for tax, um, estates and trusts, financial and, and business law, um, these advisors and accountants are all these advisors are probably going to chime in for a lot of business owners, um, whether there are small or if, like I said, probably a lot of these privately held companies that are a series of family or interrelated companies are going to have discussions. Okay, let's pull up the last slide. But Ryan, with the few minutes that we have left, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, I am one of those attorneys that likes to try and get ahead out of it. I'll put it this way. 
Um, if you have to speak to my business partner that we talked about at the top of the half hour, it's like, oh, you probably waited too long or you miscommunicated something or there was a problem that you couldn't kind of correct, which great, great for him. That's why he exists. And he is a problem solver and solver like me. But for things like this, where you can get a heads up and have those discussions and prepare and not to mention you have a year grace period, um, I, I think you need to kind of prepare yourself and kind of figure out again, are you going to have to be a reporting company? And then if so, who are all your beneficial owners? If you have business partners and it's a pain in the butt to kind of corral them or get information, or can you send me your documents? Talk now. Cause again, it's very easy. Look at this year. The year went by very quickly as we reopened up. Um, I suspect next year will be much the same. So that's kind of my, um, last kind of bit. The only thing, oh, maybe we can talk about it again, or as a follow-up, there are new, there is new information because the, the system, by the way, the system is not even up yet. It's not like you can preload this stuff. They will make it go live probably on January 1st. So even I don't know what the online system or platform looks like to upload this information. Um, on that note, I do also think if people are planning to launch a new business in the year, the reporting timeline requirement is different. And we can talk about that. Like I said, Kathleen, if you want to have me back when we're, we're in it, but, um, it, FinCEN is discussing a rule of 50, uh, 30 to 90 days. So if you register a new LLC in the new year, you have to file this report from the date of registration of your new LLC. So. Again, a lot of people, as I said, they're used to filing an LLC with articles or organization here being done. So my point of on this is know this law and get prepared for your information that you're going to report. Wonderful. Ryan, nick of time. Look at that. Thank you again for being on the show. We had Ryan K. Hugh, partner for Hugh and Bordenay, talking about the Corporate Transparency Act that will take effect on January 1st, 20. 24. So Ryan, thank you again for being on the show today. No, thank you for having me again. And it's so great to talk to you after, well, we're still on Zoom, but we'll get together in person. We all do. And thank you again to Think Tech Hawaii for making shows like this possible. We had Haley and Mike who helped us out for this episode. Until next time, aloha.